In August 2024, I headed up to Missoula, Montana to see Pearl Jam with a few old friends of mine. Here's Jeremiah from Hawaii, Slater from New York, Jed from Bozeman, and Frost from Billings. We rallied at Jed's old family cabin on City Lake and everything was peaceful until the day of the Pearl Jam show. Zoom corpses to learn anatomy. I don't know if you knew any of this stuff. Oh, yeah. Start a big old fucking fire. And just be all snarky, weak, shite. I'm on the road from Pueblo West, Colorado to the middle of Wyoming on Interstate 25. I'm rendezvousing with one of my best pals, Jeremiah Johnson. Then we'll continue north to Montana. I hit the Big 5-0 this year, and it just so happened my favorite band released their new album, Dark Matter, eight days later. Pearl Jam was going on a world tour, so I decided to rally with a few old friends and catch their concert at Grizzly Stadium in Missoula, Montana. Jeremiah is on an epic adventure of his own. He flew from his home in Oahu, Hawaii to his dad's farm in Minnesota where he picked up a Yamaha WR250 and modified it for the backcountry. His dad then shuttled him to Badlands National Park, South Dakota. Just got to the Badlands with my pops. Unloaded, this is where the motorcycle trip starts. From there he rode through the Black Hills and grasslands of Eastern Wyoming. Ooh, yeah buddy, Heartland. We are in Wyoming. Then I rendezvoused with him at the Orange Junction rest area. What a time you got here? <laughs> Jeremiah and I go way back. We were wolfhounds together. He was a 60 gunner in 1st platoon. I was the company commander's RTO. After our wolfhound days, Jeremiah stayed on the island and focused all of his energies on becoming a good surfer. He married Shinobu, a gal from Japan, and together they produced two awesome kids. His daughter is a professional surfer, presently ranked 13th in the world. Look at the stoke in his eyes. Fun fact, and this is for Betty Lou, I was with your dad the day he met the ocean. It was 1993, we went to Waimea. Check out how nervous he looks. Through the years, I've flown to Hawaii, and Jeremiah's flown to wherever I was to get into one adventure or another. In February 2008, we snowshoed into Glacier Gorge in Rocky Mountain National Park. A blizzard blew through, and we almost froze to death. But what doesn't kill you makes for great stories. What's up, dude? He's tired. Already. It's supposed to snow all night. Let's go see what the whiteout looks like. Uh, we're gonna go check, the, that's the lake right there. We're gonna go check out the whiteout conditions and stay in the middle of the lake like a bunch of morons. <laughs> Sweet. Stay tuned for Escape from Glacier Gorge. Once we loaded Jeremiah's bike and gear, we continued north and slept somewhere on the road near Billings, Montana. Next morning, we had about a four-hour drive to Missoula. My buddy Slater was flying in from New York. Slater's flight was delayed and Jeremiah was getting hangry, so we stopped in a local brewery for some grub. What are you drinking there, bud? <laughs> oh, I got me, uh, whatever this guy said, he was a good beer, he was being all snarky, you know. I tried to order IPA, and he said, oh, well, if you want a good beer, you know, I'll drink this. Fucking weak. Weak. Local IPA. Shite. Yeah, <laughs> we got any alcohol here. Yeah. Slater's flight finally arrived and we swung by the airport to pick him up. Slater and I go all the way back to 1986. Here we are in Miss Gann's fifth and sixth grade class at Lawless Elementary School in Fresno, California. We've also stayed in touch through the years. Slater flying out to wherever I happen to be and getting into various shenanigans. I made a short film about our adventures in Northwest Arkansas called Slater vs. the Ozarks. Here's a teaser. 
In March 2016, my old buddy Slater flew down from California for a three-day excursion into the Arkansas Ozarks. From mountain biking to backpacking, from paddling to camping, everything was great until we reached Big Bluff on the Buffalo National River. I want to jump off. <laughs> Cannonball into the river. Cannonball into the river. Are you okay? <laughs> Not a few Coronas. <laughs> and the Sammy Hagar comes walking right around the corner. Are you serious? <laughs> you dragged my ass out here to do this. <laughs> Slater is married with two little girls who are his North Star. When Slater was in the cockpit, we shuttled 50 miles northeast to see the lake. This is where we'll rendezvous with the rest of the crew. Yeah, buddy. This is Jed. <laughs> he and I go back to the Wolfhound days too. We were in the same battalion. He was the Charlie Company RTO and I was Alpha Company's RTO. He was a big fan of Pearl Jam and the Doors, so we hit it off right away. We've also stayed in contact over the years, and I've rambled up to Montana from time to time to get into adventures with him. He's been with his wife Katie for as long as I can remember, and they're always doing adventurous stuff. Jed and I saw Pearl Jam in Missoula in 1998, and things got totally gonzo. I'll tell that story later. Keep watching. There is Frost. I haven't seen Frost since the Army. We were tight back then. Frost and I were in 2nd Platoon before I became the company RTO. But Frost was the platoon RTO, so we continued working together. After the days of the big green weenie, we lost contact. Frost went home and within a couple years married Kelly, and they've been together 27 years. They raised two children who are now grown and on their own. After all this time, you can imagine how stoked we are to hang again. Jed's talking about the time I met Stephen Wilson Jr. I took my daughter Indy to his gig in Colorado Springs this year. Colorado Springs, how the hell are we doing? Check out his new album, Son of Dad. It will knock your socks off. The lights out. Yeah, man. It's so like Christmas, the kids are all out playing hockey at night. And it keeps them all active, too. It keeps the kids from playing video games. Yeah, just, and they're all vertical in a circle. Like how deep, dog? They're not very deep. They're, okay, so they're not megalithic. They're not like tons. Yeah, they're not like megalithic in any sense. But there is really no way for a regular person without climbing equipment to get up there. So the, the, the real mystery is that no one really knows how those stones got stacked because the Native Americans wouldn't have hiked up that far and they don't take credit for it. So it's um, it's a real interesting really feature. No, it's no, not no, it, it's done problem. by people, but, but, but the Native Americans say they didn't do it. And they just found it. So in some the, secret. I, I, who knows what, who did it? Very I, like Egyptian theory. It, it could be Let's like that. Oh, he out. has another theory on those too. Yeah, yeah. I can tell you about I that. Got that. Like, no. right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In stated. 
and this Italian Pope was instated, and so the Medici's were known as the bankers for the Catholic Church for centuries. Yeah, that's what they were. They were the wealthiest family in for 700 years, and so Leonardo da Vinci and um, Michelangelo were both commissioned by them. If you see the frescoes and the paintings and the sculptures, yeah, all so. of that. But Leonardo da Vinci was older than Michelangelo. And they used to exhume corpses to learn anatomy. I don't know if you knew any of this stuff. Oh, yeah. So if they could get the anatomy correct and the sizing oh, yeah, and everything like that. Yeah, gets the Da Vinci was threatened by Michelangelo. You can hear me, so Da Vinci was threatened by Michelangelo, and he kicked Michelangelo out of the Medici's space. Facility? Yeah, like he pretty much said, look, kid, I got this, you know, I'm the, I'm the commissioned artist for the family. Yeah. You get on your way. Yeah. So, and, and, After the first round of storytelling, we went to Lindy's for dinner. It's known as the place for steak, and that's the only thing on the menu other than a few sides. You can literally fly a float plane from like... After dinner, we went back to the cabin and traded stories long into the night. The, you know, if you know, you know. It's like Jeremiah and his, the routes he looked up. If you have a float plane, you can land. Get the fuck. <laughs> it's, 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 it looks like... It, it looks like... Do it with the ball. It Do really it with the ball. If you could land a plane right here, like an airport, runway, and you have to land it going this way, <coughs> take off the other way, and then you come over here and get a steak. That's how you get a steak at Sea Lake. Real dude, I knew it. No, uh, Let's go so, there. so I didn't say aliens, but the crazy mountains, what, the, what John said, those mountains are so good. Jeremiah slept on the front porch of the cabin and was up early fishing. After breakfast, Jeremiah rode into Missoula for some more bike repairs. Off to Missoula. Jen's always been like, yeah. you know, uh, an Olympian, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's always been. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> but the gun show was that way. What a beautiful morning. Couple hours left. Then we go to Missoula. For lunch, we grabbed burgers and milkshakes from Lindy's seaplane base before hitting the road to Missoula. Around 3 o'clock, Chuck arrived from Sandpoint, Idaho. So I go and say, screw it, get the ones that don't have the bees and start a big old fucking fire and just like throw them. Chuck is my buddy from the college days in Fresno. Since that time, he and Sarah have been raising their two kids. It's a trip how raising a family compresses time. Blink and 10 years go by. Chuck is also a big Pearl Jam fan and we're finally going to a show together. He brought along his neighbor Jason, who turned out to be a big Pearl Jam fan too. The whole thing, yeah, like, right, I just right. go for it. I'm like, there's no way we're gonna be able to get back in open the car. That, yeah. Like, we gotta open the hatch and get, because they're starting to get out inside the car. And yeah. just, it was so loud. You drop the windows, just like open, bees, open bees, it bees, up. Bees, bees, bees. It's so warm. Speaking of which, I should introduce myself. My name is Ford Granada, and the most interesting thing about me is my friends. And I just happen to be married to my best one. And I've been a Pearl Jam fan since 1992. I got my first tattoo in 1995. It was Pearl Jam's stick band, drawn by Jeff Ament, their bass player. 
So, as far as that Gonzo story I mentioned earlier, in 1998, Jed got me a ticket to my first Pearl Jam concert. It was during their tour for Yield, and they were playing to a sold-out Grizzly Stadium. The day of the show, I started getting Gonzo before noon. I wish I could say I remember everything about the show, but I can't, because I don't, and I've always regretted it. Not to mention, after the show, I wandered the streets of Missoula until Jed found me the following morning, sitting at a table reading the Missoulian outside this Circle K right here. Slater and I found it on this trip, but the table is now gone. I saw Pearl Jam again a few weeks later in San Diego and held it together pretty well that time. I've seen Pearl Jam through the years and have had a blast at each concert. When Aspen was old enough, I introduced her to Pearl Jam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In 2018, I took Chelsea to her first Pearl Jam concert at a sold out Wrigley Stadium. Speaking of firsts, this would be Frost's first Pearl Jam show, a bucket list item, he said. But this concert in Missoula was clearly going to be a bit of redemption for me. Before Pearl Jam set, we hung out with the boys on the floor before heading into the pit. I jumped around most of the show, but captured a few cool moments. Group of people, you say guitar. You know that. I just want to check everybody up top. Everybody good? Everybody up top. Hey Jeff, thanks for uh, bringing us here. We love this venue. This is. Where's my manners? Well, I haven't even toasted you yet. Um, cheers, everybody. Cheers. Ah. Um, how many folks are from Montana? And how many of you are interlopers ravaging this town and hopefully giving it Filming this clip, I caught myself, Shuck and Slater, on the big screen behind the band. Please, if 
you would join us, the band, our crew, in taking this pledge to vote. Um, here's some quick instructions. Pull out your phone. Scan the... Ed couldn't help noticing this kid on his mom's shoulders in front of us. Four, five, this looks like a 12 year old. And now he's made it to the front. But that's not the point of the story, you see. I'm looking at this kid, and then the person that's, that's jumping up and down with him on his shoulder is his mom. show 
We hung out on the roof of the rental and traded stories around the gas campfire. Next morning, everyone split early. Jed went back to the cabin. Frost hit the road to Billings. Chuck and Jason hiked to Missoula's Inn, then drove back to Idaho. Slater and I met Jeremiah for breakfast at Ruby's. Then he hit the dirt roads heading south. This route going through Idaho starts at Missoula. Uh, mostly easy gravel roads and stuff. Be kind of fun to take the long way home. Slater and I then took off back to the cabin. Okay, boys, we got a we got a tree down in the middle of the road. Storm coming in. Nice Pierce National Forest. Jeremiah got caught in a squall as soon as he hit the back roads. Oh, Heard a big crack. Let's jump out of his truck and start cutting. He's howling. We got hit with that same storm. Man, I just had a big squall come through and shake trees up, drop some branches on us. Woo! We made it though. Big wind, big rain. Swept through here. Jed's up there. Checking the roof. Always an adventure. The power was out for the rest of the evening, but we cooked by the grill and stoked the fireplace, and all was well. Just got the right spot. Next day, Slater and I grabbed some sushi before he caught his flight back to New York. I originally planned on taking two days to drive back, but instead I just kept driving, making the 13-hour drive in one shot. I had a lot to process. Seeing my old friends again, concert, the stories. Frost called it therapy for the soul, and it certainly was. I finally got to know Frost as John. Jeremiah completed his cross-country motorcycle trip on September 8th, flying back to Hawaii from Las Vegas. He checked off several items on his bucket list. Well, I made it to Utah, Lake Sevier. I stopped at Joseph to get a taco, it was delicious. Had no veggies in it. Best taco I ever had. In the end, these are some of the best guys I've ever known. Hope to see you cowboys sooner than later. But until then, happy trails.